In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and operate a complete QRP ham radio station using the 2 tin tuners transmitter, Sudden Storm 2 receiver, and tuna helper TR switch from QRPME.com. Note that transmitting as I am demonstrating here requires a suitable amateur radio license from your national licensing authority. QRPME.com, operated by Rex Harper, W1REX, sells a number of inexpensive QRP-related ham radio kits. While the assembly instructions on QRPME.com for the kits are good, they don't, they don't tell you how to set up and operate the equipment once assembled. It may be obvious to seasoned QRP operators, but beginners may want some more direction, so I decided to put this video together to help. The two tinned tunas is QRPME.com's version of the Tuna Tin 2, first described in the May 1976 issue of QST magazine. It's a simple two-transistor crystal control transmitter that puts out about 200 milliwatts of RF power. The QRPME.com design adds a nice blue transmit LED, gain control, and a third transistor for key switching. The Sudden Storm 2 is QRPME.com's version of the Reverend George Dobbs direct conversion Sudden receiver. Crystal controlled, it supports multiple bands with a plug-in module, controls for audio gain, and some degree of tuning around the crystal frequency. It uses two integrated circuits and one transistor. The Tuna Helper is a TR switch which is RF activated and automatically switches your antenna between the transmitter and receiver by sensing when transmitting. Jumpers select between slow or fast transmit receive delay. A mute output can be used to disable the receiver during transmit. First make sure the individual kits are assembled and working. Note that on some versions of the Sudden Storm receiver there are a couple of errors. Some tracks may need to be cut and the value of C6 may need to be changed. Check the QRPME.com website for details. There is a revision 3 version of the receiver that is newer than mine shown here. You'll need to hook up the three components using cables. Low cost, i.e. dollar store audio video cables can be used. With care you can usually split the two or three conductor type cables into separate cables if desired. You'll need at least three power connections. Like me, you may have a number of devices that need 12 volt power. Here's a simple power distribution box I made from a Penguin Mints box compatible with Altoids and some RCA jacks and banana jacks. Power comes in on the two banana jacks and is available on six phono jacks. RCA or phono jacks are not ideal for power as they're easy to touch to ground and short, but they are cheap. It's also easy to misconnect and possibly damage a device if your RF connectors are the same. You might want to label them or follow a convention such as using red jacks for power and white for others. A better but more expensive power connector is the Anderson power pole connector which is commonly used by ha radio amateurs. A good selection of adapters between RCA phono jack and plug PL259, SO239, etc. is handy to have around to make any connections you'll need. Let's look at the setup. Put crystals in the sudden storm and two tin tunas. Normally you would use the same frequency. The 7.030 MHz crystal that came with the kits is a good frequency for QRP if you built them for the 40 meter band. I also cut the leads on the crystals as they're longer than needed, but don't cut them too short. I recommend you use the receiver muting feature. Make up a cable that connects to the Sudden Storm 2 pin Molex connector and RCA on the other end. This will mute or turn off the receiver during transmitting. If you don't do this, you will hear the transmitter loudly in the receiver. You can use this as a side tone feature if you aren't using a keyer that provides one, but it's so loud you want to take the headphones off and lay them down on a desk. I put small marks of white paint or nail polish on the gain and tuning controls so you can see where they are. The gain control works backwards from what you might expect, i.e. the maximum gain is counterclockwise when viewed from the front. Is this an error by design or a PCB layout issue? I don't know. Plug Walkman style headphones into the headphone jack. You could plug PC type amplified computer speakers instead if you want to hear it from a speaker. With a strong signal you may even be able to drive a small loudspeaker directly. On the two tin tunas, put in a crystal. 
the small variable resistor adjusts the output power. Clockwise increases it. If the full output of 200 milliwatts is too much for you, you can turn it down. On the tuna helper, set the TR delay using the two jumpers to either fast or slow depending on the break-in speed you prefer. Fast is dot and slow is word spacing depending on your sending speed. It's possible to install a variable resistor to control the speed, but the kit ships with a fixed resistor that is installed there. Connect all three units to 12 volt power. Be careful to get the connectors correct. On the tuner helper, you may have used an RCA connector for power, or like me, used the screw terminal connector that ships with the kit. Your antenna, tuner, or dummy load goes to the tuna helper antenna jack. RX on the tuna helper goes to the sudden storm receiver antenna jack. TX on the tuna helper goes to the two tin tunas transmitter antenna jack. Plug a hand key or electronic keyer into the transmitter key jack. Plug the tuna helper mute to the two pin molex on the sudden storm. Good operating practice dictates to first test the transmitter and TR switch with a dummy load. QRPME.com makes this nice little matchless dummy load that can handle the power from the 210 two tunas. It should handle up to 2 watts of continuous power. Here I'm testing it with a QRP watt meter as well to confirm the power out and that the SWR is low into a dummy load. Key the transmitter and you should hear the relay on the tuna helper click into transmit mode and after a delay back to receive. The blue LED on the two tin tunas will indicate you are on the air. During transmit no signal should be heard from the sudden storm receiver except some clicks when the relay switch is over if the mute function is working. At this point, a good test to check the transmit and receive frequencies is to disconnect the mute cable. When you transmit, you should now hear the signal in the receiver. Take off the headphones for this. The receiver antenna is disconnected by the TR switch, but there should be more than enough signal leaking through to hear. Adjust the tune control on the receiver and you should get a zero beat around the middle of the dial if the transmit and receive crystals are at the same frequency. You can adjust the offset for the frequency you want to hear and anyone replying back to you on your transmit frequency should be around this frequency. Now put the mute cable back. If you're ready to get on the air you can replace the dummy load with your antenna or antenna tuner. If band conditions are good, you should now hear some signals in the receiver. If you use an antenna tuner, use it as you normally would. Some automatic tuners may not work with such a low power level. A manual tuner may also be difficult to read the SWR unless you have a low power setting or use a QRP watt meter. Here you can see my antenna tuner with negligible reflected power after I've adjusted it. Listen for a CQ and answer it, or if the frequency is clear, call CQ and see if a station calls you back. With the tuna helper you have nice break-in operation that even some bigger rigs lack. The low power is a challenge. The single best thing you can do to compensate is to use a good antenna. If you have several crystals, you can switch crystals if you want to change frequency. Mobile operation is possible if you have a 12 volt DC power source. With my setup, the current drain at 13.8 volts is about 24 milliamps on receive 
and 170 milliamps on transmit. If you want a little more power output, you can use the tuna topper that is similar to the tuna helper TR switch, but also includes a power amplifier that can boost the 210 tunas up to a 55 watts. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you get a similar station on the air, I hope this was of help to you. 73 and see you on the air.